All right, it's time for DigiKey plus Adafruit present. This week, it's Little Fuse. Yes, they make little fuses, but they also uh, recently acquired U.S. Sensor, and so they have a bunch of sensors as well. Um, they have a bunch of other electronics as well, but a uh, nice, cute logo. I like the little, like, wave in the middle yeah, of the it's L. an L, and it's, uh, you know, oh. there's some signal going through. Yeah, maybe they're saying that they stop these signals. I don't mm, know. It could be. Okay, so um, this week's NPI is the uh, PG- PPG-1 XXX series of little RTD sensors. These are so small. Um, these are small chunks of platinum bonded onto the back of a ceramic uh, material to give them uh, strength. And then there's two little leads that you plug into a circuit. You measure the resistance and you know the temperature. And last week when I asked Phil, what, do you, what should I do for next week's MPI, this week's, you said, well, can you do like some sort of turkey theme? And so I was like, okay, like a turkey theme. Well, this is That's a turkey. Right. Um, this is some cool photos I found on Flickr uh, that were public domain. Thanks for all those cool photos. This is a beautiful, beautiful turkey. Yeah. Um, how it started, how, how it's going. How it's going. Okay, so when you're making a turkey, you, you know, it's important to make sure that first off, you got to defrost it if you got a frozen turkey. Um, and then you have to uh, cook it all the way through. Like, raw turkey is really gross. And overcooked turkey isn't so great either. So you want to get it to, like, exactly 165 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, to do that, you've got this like thermometer here, right? It's got a little plug-in thermometer. Um, but how could we engineer, because uh, uh, we're electrical engineers, how can we make an electrical engineering version of this thermometer so we can monitor our turkey? Maybe we would have it even like, you know, the temperature sensor would be in the oven and it would like SMS us when it's time to get the turkey because it's like in there for four or five hours. Okay, so here's uh, a couple options. So the simplest way you can make a temperature sensor, and temperature sensors are so common for engineers to add, whether it's making a turkey monitor or you have a thermal system that you want to monitor, like you want to make sure your your processor isn't getting too hot, for example, or maybe you want to have a little bit of heating in your circuit but not too much, um, or maybe you have to uh, compensate or uh, derate something due to temperature. You know, your um, electronics or your amplifier may not work the same at high versus low temperatures, or, you know, I'm working with e-ink displays. You need to know the temperature because they act differently at different temperatures. So the easiest way to measure temperature, the cheapest, is you just use a diode. Uh, you put a constant current through it, you measure the voltage across it, and uh, if you remember um, your um, diode equation, you might not remember this, but you definitely remember that VT equals KT um, over Q, which is like the standard, you know, temperature, constant voltage equation. And um, you can uh, basically, you know, diodes work differently, at different temperatures, but you can use that to kind of reverse solve for the temperature because everything else here is a constant if you have... Um, the temperature is a constant and you know what like the voltage is and you can measure it over different uh, temperatures so you can see the, the differential. Um, so this is a diode equation. So this works quite well, um, but it's not very precise. So there's ways to improve it. You can use a silicon band gap temperature sensor, which is actually basically two diodes and you're measuring the difference, you know, the, the, um, the uh, ratio between the two. Um, and uh, you can do that. And you also basically solve this KT over Q. You solve for the T you get the temperature. And actually this is used um, in a lot of sensors. This is the most common sensor you're gonna see in an embedded, uh, like a microcontroller or a, a sensor. Here's the the um, analog design for it. It's just basically, you basically get rid of this common mode error because you have um, two transistors that are fabricated on the same uh, substrate. Um, and then you get the output. And then this is, you know, whenever you buy like a silicon uh, temperature sensor, like not silicon material, but like silicon is in it's integrated circuitry um, like this uh, you know one wire temperature sensor is very common um, and these work quite well but they top out right they're they're pretty precise you can get like easily 0.1 percent precision out of them and accuracy um, but they top out at like 125 uh, degrees C which is you know hotter than you want your turkey to be but it's not as hot as your oven can get because your oven now I have to do the conversion between Fahrenheit and Celsius which I wrote down. Um, right, so inside of an oven, it could be 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 230 C, which is twice as high 
as what um, your circuitry might want. And so you don't want the risk of your, your sensor getting damaged because it's exposed to the high heat in the oven. And so, you know, okay, what do you do when you have to measure something high temperature, like a high range? Low range, those silicon diode style ones are great. For high temperature ranges, you'll want to go with something like a thermocouple. Classic. This is like an ancient technology. You take uh, some, you know, alumal, you take some other metals, and you bond them together. And, um, you know, the output of the, there's a micro voltage difference with temperature. And these go up to like massive ranges. You do need to have a little amplifier driver. So here we see, you know, I have um, a circuit driver that you plug the thermocouple into. And then does the amplification for you converting that micro voltage level into um, a higher voltage and then does the uh, analog digital conversion and then you can convert that to temperature. Um, what's nice about thermocouples, as you can see here, they're, they're happy to go up to 500, 1000 degrees C easily, right? The, the common ones are that type K, um, but type J are also quite popular. And these, these go up to, um, you know, 1500, well, at least 1000 degrees C. So these are quite common, you know, actually a lot of times when you get oven thermometers, um, you'll see them have a thermocouple. But there's one thing that's not so great about thermocouples is that they have error, they have quite a bit of error in them. They're not as accurate or precise um, as we might want. If we want to get to, you know, 0.1% or better or less than 1%, you're always going to have about like a couple degree offsets with thermocouples. Um, and so when you need to have uh, higher precision, that's when you would go to an RTD. So, you know, you need low accuracy, low voltage range, diodes are great. Um, you want high temperature range, but somewhat lower accuracy, thermocouples are great. But if you want both, you want the best of both worlds because you want the stuffing and the cranberry sauce, you wanna go with an RTD. Um, and these are little chunks of platinum and they come in different resistance ohms at uh, zero degrees C, you know, so it's like freezing. So they're easy to calibrate because you can use ice water baths to calibrate, you know, to make sure. Um, you get 100, 500, or 1,000 ohms. Um, and the resistance change for these is like almost totally linear, um, which is really wonderful. And um, you're just measuring the resistance. So you don't need, you want to have like a high precision circuit, but it's not, you're not dealing with microvolts here. You're, you're dealing with a couple ohms, which is a lot easier to deal with than these noisy microvolts that might be affected by, you know, your, your local environment. Um, for these, you know, you still do want to have some sort of amplification circuit, some op amp, you'll need a constant current source, um, but that's a lot, not too hard. Um, there's built in uh, all in one drivers and we have a driver here that can handle um, RTDs quite easily. And um, this is great because now you can measure your turkey in your oven at high temperatures, high precision. And this sensor, I'll show it. Um, let me let's show the demo now. And then we'll go. Is this the demo? No, that's <laughs> the turkey. All right. Okay, so um, let me focus lock. This doesn't freak out on you. So this is actually the sensor. It's so small. It's meant to go into like you know pretty much any device. Let me see if I can zoom in. You, you may need, well, I don't want to zoom too much because I need to keep this. Yeah, no, no. This number visible. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is just my you know pocket multimeter. It's it's not the, the you know it's not the best. Uh, way of measuring this um, resistance, but it does a good enough job. Okay, sorry, this is getting a little loose. Okay, so, um, you know, the resistance right now is about like 1.1K. Um, this is a 1K um, RTD, and then when I put my finger on it, you can see the temperature is going up, and if I'm like really gross and I put it on my tongue. Yeah. Mm, warm. Not quite turkey warm, but warm, and when I blow on it, you can see the number goes down, so it's cooling off. So it's nice as you can see that even a couple degree change, well, you know, the, the, the ohms, if it's at a one kilo ohm, then it's like even a couple ohms, it'll start move quite, it's very fast, very responsive, um, and it's, it's quite easy to measure that change. So you can get, you know, I think um, there's 0.06% um, accurate RTDs, and these are like a couple dollars. So these are kind of starting to replace thermocouples um, in a lot of places. And again, they're much smaller. They're these really tiny little things, and they're it's going to be a lot smaller and easier to integrate into an existing circuit than a thermocouple. So uh, you can get these. I picked this one. This is the uh, PT100 uh, 0.06 ohm radial sensor. But they have a couple different in the family. There's the 500 and the 1000 as well. 
Um, there's tons of app nuts online on how to convert these into um, the resistances into the exact temperature if you want to. If you, can, you can do algorithmically or you can use a table if you want better accuracy. Um, they're not too expensive and they're really small. So if you have a small, high accuracy, high precision, and wide temperature range sensing need, this is, will be what I would recommend. All right, and it's available on DigiKey. The card number is 18PPT101JAND. Or you can just go to short URL digikey.com forward slash short forward slash ZV7523. And that's this week's Eye on Gobble Gobble. Eye on MPI.